is in fact a second price auction with a reserve price, right? So you know that's so the second price auction does have some uh, very important property. So let me just um, say like a few words about about um, dynamic auctions. Uh, so the two most familiar auctions are the English auction, where uh, prices increase from let's say the reserve price upwards. And the Dutch auction where prices decrease from a high value until one person says, yeah, I want the good. And then you stop the auction and give it at that price. And in fact, you can think of the English auction as nothing but uh, you know, equivalent to a first. It's strategically equivalent to a, a, a first price auction. And the English auction uh, to the second price auction. Right. So the winner actually pays a little more than the bid of the second highest guy. You know, that's 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 um, that's the. Uh, if you think about it for a moment, that's uh, it, you know it will seem pretty clear. Uh, so one can think of an English auction where prices rise, right, until uh, all except one bidder drops out, as as a way to implement uh, a Marson type optimal auction. Okay, and that dynamic auctions are popular in practice. They're transparent, and 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 and, and uh, you know it makes collusion uh, especially hard because everything is happening pretty much instantaneously, right? So you can't make plans about how to bid and so on and so forth. So finally, um, combinatorial auctions. So these are multiple goods. You know, such as the spectrum, airport landing slots, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, the critical thing to remember here is that a bidder's valuation is multi-dimensional. The valuation is not one number, but a whole string of numbers. So, if there are n n goods, sorry, m goods, then a typical valuation consists of two to the power m numbers, one for each possible package of the m goods, right? So, so if you you know you can have one unit, two units, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, combinations of goods, and they're exactly if there are m goods that are two to the power m packages, and 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 the critical point here is that the value of getting object A and object B together is not the sum of the values of getting objects A and B separately because of synergy and externalities and stuff like that, right? So. Uh, you really do need these two to the power m um, numbers. So let's ask the same question: What's the revenue optimal uh, combinatorial auction so that you know we can do the best we can in 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 a in a um, uh, you know in a spectrum auction? Answer: We don't know, and and anybody who solves it will get a Nobel Prize for sure. Uh, we don't even know it for two objects. It's a, it's a very hard problem. Um, perhaps it doesn't even have a nice uh, solution. Um, anyway, so uh, the important point is selling each good independently may not serve the interests of either efficiency or revenue, because this will typically induce very complicated strategic behavior. You know whether you want to bid for whether you know the value. You know how you want to bid for one object will depend on what you think is going to happen in, in, in subsequent rounds of biddings where other objects are being sold. Right? So this, in, you know, this makes it a very hard question right? and induces all kinds of very complex uh, you know, strategic behavior. So if you can't do revenue optimization, can you do uh, efficiency? Right, so give the give assign the packages in such a way that you maximize the sum of valuations you know, from a social objective. Yes, you can um, by a sealed bid auction, which is uh, a generalization of the second price auction, and this is called the VCG auction. Uh, I, I'm not going to have time to describe it, but it's one of the great ideas of uh, auction design. The 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 Victory Clark Groves. Um, uh, auction. Uh, it's not revenue optimal. It's efficient, but it's not revenue optimal. And and so this is a sealed bid auction. Can one find a dynamic auction or an English auction which replicates the VCG auction just like the English, the standard English auction replicated the second price or Myersonian auction? 
uh, this is again a very hard uh, theoretical question. It's a, there's a huge amount of research, uh, you know, in the literature going on uh, about you know ways in which this can be done. It's, I suppose, uh, fair to say that there isn't a clear answer. Uh, okay, uh, that's all I have to say. I'm, I'm sorry, it's um, it, it, it's not particularly satisfactory as a as as um, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, you know explaining everything, but I hope you get an idea that there is uh, you know huge and, and and rich literature out there. Thanks. Thank you, Aruna. Um, I now invite uh, Mr. Rajat Mukherjee. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, after that very uh, laying the foundation of spectrum, I'm really quite at a loss. I'm, I'm more of a, a practical person who sort of gets his fingers and hands and toes dirty. And I can assure you, over the last 15 years, they have become pretty dirty. But uh, um, I, I'm really going to uh, talk to you on what has happened so far, where we are, and uh, what I think we need to do going forward. And I am deeply indebted to the opening words of uh, Mr. Sam Pretroda, where he recognized the fact that we need to move to phase two. And uh, I haven't just prepared this presentation just now, so you'll see somewhere in there that I'm talking about a phase two. So it is recognition also of the fact that possibly we are reverberating on the same frequency at some level, and I'm not talking spectrum frequency here. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, my fellow panelists, and in Arunava, I think that was a phenomenal um, presentation at a theoretical level. I just wish we had the right audience here so that the next auction is more correctly designed, and I use the word correctly with a great deal of deliberation. Not that the earlier auctions were incorrect, but I do believe that there is a great deal of scope for improvement in the auction design and the principles. Um, and this is something which I think every operator has had to grapple with in the recent past, because uh, as the industry has grown, the need for spectrum has grown even more significantly. These are just random statements. They are not, I'm not attributing them to anybody. But I think I, I'm, what I'm really trying to get across here is the sense that spectrum today is possibly one of the most critical needs. I did not necessarily agree with Mr. Sam Petroda's comment about the last mile connectivity being in, on, on fiber, fiber to the home, because wireless has the ability to get you there much faster. And if Mr. Uh, Satyan Gupta is still in the room, he's going to probably catch me by the throat later and uh, have me for breakfast tomorrow morning. But uh, my view really, quite honestly, is in an environment like we have in the country, and I think it's important to understand the industry status, with over 900 million sub total subscribers, out of which 886 of them are all wireless, for us to be looking at getting back into laying fiber is like a step back down the uh, development causeway. This is an industry which has got over 200 thousand crores of revenue. It's an industry which over the last 19 years has invested a gross block of over 7 billion rupees. I know somebody is going to probably take out their calculator and start doing a calculation, but it is a colossal amount of money. 
but it's also an industry which has a net debt which is two and a half billion rupees. On an EBITDA, after 19 years, and this is at an aggregated level of only 4 billion, 0.4 billion, I beg your pardon. Now that is a story by itself. So on one side, there's a great deal of backslapping and saying, what a great job we've done in the last 20 years. How phenomenal it has been. We've got 886 people or rather connections out there in the marketplace. There's 212,000 crores of revenue. It's adding 3% to your GDP. But the investors have only got 0.4 billion in terms of EBITDA. And if I break this, these numbers down in greater detail, it really only means that the entire industry is awash with red ink. There are only three who are managing to keep their heads above water and are probably choking. And so you have an environment where the atmosphere says, get the maximum from them in terms of spectrum. Charge them the, the earth. Why? Because our fiscal deficit needs to be propped up a bit. Well, that's one of the arguments which is given. But then what will you have on the flip side? Will you have a vibrant, will you have an active industry? Will you have them, will you have an industry with the ability to make another seven billion dollars investment in grass block? And let me assure you, that's what's going to be needed moving down the road. Because the spectrum that is going to be needed in this next phase round is going to be not for the existing access, because that is getting skewed. And look at the numbers. We've got 139% penetration in the urban area, and we've got only a 42% penetration in the rural area. Okay, these are numbers everybody will say, ha, we knew it. Okay, you started at the urban level and you're spreading out. The urban areas have obviously adopted data usage. But the interesting thing is, that the rural areas are now beginning to get onto that data pipe. And I fear that in the short period of time that we continue to expand the rural uh, penetration, the data usage in the rural area is going to completely outstrip the, uh, the urban areas. Completely. You know, we have a great deal of myths associated with data. Some people, when they think about data, they think of, you know, a 14-inch screen, a laptop, and a, maybe a dongle in it, and you are connected to a constantly on internet connection. But the person out in the rural Chindwara area, or even Gadchiroli in, Mah in Maharashtra, he has no clue about this laptop. He's doing it on a small little device which is possibly not even 3G enabled. It's pure text. He's doing it on a 2G, black and white, pure text phone. He doesn't even know he's on the internet. What is he doing? He's in a chat room with somebody on Facebook or some other little application of that nature. Internet for him is not a word which he even understands. But the volumes of that data usage coming out from those areas is going to blow the socks off the entire industry. And we can see it happening. And we can see it happening, why? And I'm, I'm sure this is, every operator is going to probably come up with their own story, but I think IDEA is a little more tuned to it for the very simple reason that IDEA has the largest penetration in the rural markets. We don't really have, we, we, we're very present in the Bombay, Delhi, Calcutta, Madras areas as well. But we are there in the Gadchirolis of the world. We are there in the Latours. We are there in the Chindwaras of Madhya Pradesh. We are, we are probably the only operator in, uh, in Chhattisgarh, which is supposed to be the, the red district. Okay? 
we've had our towers blown up overnight we've had our uh, security people uh, just taken away nothing happens to them or oh, they're very good about that they just remove them and they say look we'll keep you a, a little distance away we just want to bring the tower down that's it we've had all kinds of situations happening to us and all this is happening in areas which are tomorrow going to be the data users of this country how am I going to be able to support that if I don't have spectrum? Right? I said it's the need of the hour. But I said, and this is where I was pointing out, the next round is the data game. I currently have 886 million people on the mobile voice. And yes, there was a time, uh, Rajat, when we were doing 20 million subscribers a month. And that, that is not going to be repeated, no question about it. But I think the, the, the uplift of subscribers is still going to continue. There's a huge capacity for voice which is still exists out there. But it has shifted from that earlier environment of a one-to-one -one connection of a classic tele telephone uh, system. It is now shifted to the one-to-many. And the internet on the mobile has become central to the lifestyle of a very, very, very large number of our people here in the country. But let's try and break that down. It's 210 million Indians today have internet access, OK? But the interesting thing is that 188 million of them are on mobile. It's, it's something along the same lines as that 916 million uh, uh, total subscribers and 886 million on them on mobile. So you have 210 million users of uh, internet access, but 188 more million of them are on mobile. And this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is not data that I am cooking up. This is from the TRAI. Okay? Now the implication of this really is only that in this present day, as we sit and as we speak today, there's a potential for 600 million plus waiting to get on to the mobile internet. Now, if you do a quick back of the uh, envelope calculation, work out how many GB they are likely to use, try and figure out how much spectrum that is going to need. And let's look at the spectrum now. I've broken this up for purposes of easy uh, understanding as before 2010 and acquired after 2010. And the reason is because 2010, 2012, and 2014 were three tranches of auctions which took place, right? Prior to this, it was an administratively allocated system. So under that system, approximately 1168 megahertz of spectrum in various bands was allocated. Subsequent to 2010, we've got another additional 1635 megahertz of spectrum which has been allocated. Now this total would come to about 2800 megahertz of spectrum, which is sitting out there. Okay? Sounds like an enormous chunk of change. But quite honestly, this is the total across 22 service areas. So if you really want to know how much spectrum is being used out there by eight players, please divide this number by 22 and then by eight. And then you will get the actual amount of spectrum which each operator is currently utilizing. And then you will understand why I said in my previous slide that there is a desperate need for spectrum. Desperate. The 800 band, the 900 band, the 1800 band, the 2100 band, the 2300 band, these are all already available and put out there. There is a scope for us to put out much more in the 1800 band, in the 2100 band, and in a little bit of reconfiguration on the 800 band to allow it to be merge in with the, in the 900 and become the extended GSM band. It is possible to do. And that's where the technologies exist. And we need to have the courage to be able to recognize that 
and not be accused of pandering to what the industry's requirements are, but the industry's requirements are desperate in nature. We need it. So if you do something which is good for the industry, isn't it good for the country as a whole? I mean, who can, who can, who can question that logic? But there are other elements also in this piece. Spectrum sharing is being talked about. And it fundamentally, it implies the, the ability to be able to simultaneously use a specific band. There's discussion on this. I'm not getting into it. It's a good piece. It's an excellent piece. But it's only solving half the problem because the, the, the pie out there is not large enough. So what you, all you're saying really is share what you have out there. But why don't you try and give us more of that pie? We're talking about spectrum trading. Again, good, excellent, to be permitted on a circle basis, but for a defined period. Now, I'm not going to get into the pros and cons of the, the policies over here, but these are excellent steps for the future, excellent steps. We need more spectrum there, which can also come under this. But all these are part of what we might call the active infrastructure sharing elements. We had uh, uh, a query raised in the first session on the passive infrastructure issues, and they are, they are enormous issues, right, in terms of the passive infrastructure sharing. But that was a sharing element which was started as far back as 1999. And let me ask, let me also share with you that in 1999, when, when passive infrastructure sharing was started, it was not started with the intention of, uh, uh, you know, trying to maximize networks and uh, create larger um, coverage areas. It was just trying to get to the market faster. If there was a, a tower already existing there, and I knew that that tower belonged to somebody else, I'd walk up to that other person and say, hey, you mind if I sling my uh, equipment onto that tower as well? And so started in, uh, the, the passive infrastructure sharing. It was, as, as, it was as simplified as that. And then, of course, it got much more structured, and now you have tower companies which are, uh, you know, uh, valuations in their own right. But if I finally get back to the story of Spectrum, I've talked about my 883 million subscribers. There's a total of 3,103 megahertz of Spectrum which is being used by these 83 million subscribers. And therefore, if I were to just broadly and you just do a calculation, I'm saying each megahertz has an average of 285,000 subscribers at a gross level. But let me break these numbers down a little bit. 56% of the subscribers, and I'll come to why I've taken 56%, 56% of the subscribers, or 493 million, are consuming 26% of the total spectrum. It's the classic 80-20 situation. Classic. Right? And they are supporting 609,000 subscribers on 1 megahertz of spectrum. And the balance of 44 uh, percent of the subscribers of 390 million are utilizing most inefficiently 2,293 megahertz of spectrum. There is a huge, huge, huge scope for us to be able to reorganize the entire parcel in such a fashion that there is a greater efficiency of use, there is a use in, by those people who need it the most. And there is that efficiency becomes then a benchmark for the industry to measure itself against. Is 285 plus minus? If you're doing five times that on the, on the uh, top, top side, wow. If you're doing five times under that on the, on the bottom side, ew. why aren't these measurements also put out? 
I reiterate my point. There's a desperate need to get more spectrum to those who use it efficiently. But, and I'm sure everybody will say, ah, now he's getting into the meat of what he wants to say. I don't know. But there is always a but. 